The Euphrates River is drying up and things are starting to get really bad. And now everyone is in full disbelief when the river got closed off and something was discovered in it. But why did they close off the river? And what did scientists discover that was so terrifying? You might want to stick around right until the end of this video because I'll be revealing a shocking new discovery made by scientists. Due to the tremendous length of the river, the Euphrates River became Western Asia's longest river. The Euphrates River and its tributaries make up parallel grid. The amount of water in the river has also been impacted by the decline in snowfall. The extreme drought and increasing evaporation both contributed to the river's decrease. Another factor is the building of dams, since several nations changed the water flow by building dams along the streams. As it produces hydroelectricity and regulates flooding, it benefits the populace in part. The river is a major source of income for many people, and the reduction in water availability had an impact on all of them. People's means of subsistence were non-existent, and the expanding population would not have access to water. They might even have to migrate to different locations to live a simple life, since they would struggle to have enough water. It is shockingly predicted in the official report from 2021 that the river will dry up within the next 20 years. Around 100 families would leave their lives on the Euphrates River's coast and move to another location where they might survive as a result of the failed harvests, the drought and the lack of access to clean drinking water. Now this is where things start to get really shocking. When the river system collapses before the people, this area will be a catastrophe it would crack to the point where it would be impossible to repair it. Nations would become estranged from one another as a result of the water issues and the government would be unable to take any action to resolve the serious problem. This would not result in any form of resolution and the crisis would persist for a considerable amount of time. The loss of water would hurt the health of many individuals. People would be forced to use whatever water is available to them which would be polluted because they wouldn't have access to pure water. Health emergencies would result as a result, since the population's immunity would be severely compromised. Children would be susceptible to diarrhea and cholera, which would damage their healthy bodies. Because they have no other choice than to continue using contaminated water, people may not even recover from this. They must resume using the same water even after treatment. If their lifestyle does not alter, there will always be a lot of doubt about their health. Few people consider the bright side of things, even if many people believe that the river's drying up has only caused them trouble. The Euphrates River's disappearance has several positive effects. What you see right here on the screen is the current state of the river. The drying up of the river provided fascinating contributions to archaeology. The archaeologists were shocked when several historical sites and buildings were found. They began their archaeological investigation to learn more about these recently constructed structures. Due to the diligent archaeologists' investigation, long-kept mysteries are now coming to light. When such a shocking revelation is revealed, who can relax? Now this is where things start to get really interesting. The incredible claim that the tomb of King Gilgamesh was uncovered has been making the rounds for a while. When a team of archaeologists set out on their excavation mission, they discovered contemporary Iraq. Gilgamesh once called the ancient city of Uruk his home. A magnetometer was employed by the archaeologists to search for signs of the city. However, Uruk was not found. Instead, they discovered something more unexpected. A submerged ceremonial complex was discovered. The specifics of the tome were written in the Epic of Gilgamesh. What surprised the archaeologists was how similar it looked to the tomb of Gilgamesh. Mesopotamia is where the Epic of Gilgamesh takes place. It provided a detailed analysis of Gilgamesh's life as well as the Mesopotamian civilization. The renowned Gilgamesh was a hybrid of God and people. He was quite good at building things and making decisions. He also abides by strict guidelines. People's lives were impacted by his cruelty, and he showed little to no pity. He cannot be considered one of the kind rulers. He was renowned for his harshness and ferocity instead. Enkidu was a man who entered the story to evaluate Gilgamesh's abilities. He coexists with animals before slowly catching on to how society functions. He managed to get to Uruk where he was forced to face Gilgamesh. Enkidu and Gilgamesh engaged in combat. Did you manage to figure out who won? Gilgamesh's might was unrivaled, hence he won the battle. 
However, he grew to admire Enkidu, and this opened the door for the two of them to form an unshakable bond. They undertook risky escapades, and the kingdom was aware of their relationship. They engaged in a battle with Humbaba on one of their escapades. He was the one who upheld the link between the realm of mortals and the world of humans, and it was his responsibility to protect the sacredness of the Cedar Forest. But now things start to get really shocking. Enkidu and Gilgamesh began their exploration of the Cedar Forest and scaled seven mountains to get to its center. They cut down several trees while traveling, which alarmed Humbaba because he was tasked with guarding the Cedar Forest. Gilgamesh was forced to ask Shamash for assistance in escaping Humbaba's wrath. He represented the Mesopotamian sun god. He let loose right winds to occupy Humbaba. As Humbaba was rendered blind by the constant eight winds, it was to Gilgamesh and Enkidu's advantage. Humbaba was helpless to protest, so the pair killed him. They ran into Easter as they returned to Uruk. She was referred to as the goddess of love. Gilgamesh learned about her bad treatment of her lovers because of this. His tenacity fascinated her and she yearned to wed him. She eventually got close to him and told him that she wanted to marry him. Gilgamesh was aware of the mistreatment Easter's lovers had endured, therefore he refrained from doing it. She experienced hurt and disdain. When she asked her father for help, he gave her the bull of heaven because she wanted exact retribution. Gilgamesh and Enkidu killed the bull and removed its heart. Then, as a sign of appreciation, they gave it to Shamash. Enkidu was killed as a result of the gods' anger when this offended them. After the death of his comrade, Gilgamesh yearned for immortality and other divine powers. His final stop was the abode of Utnapishtim. On his journey, he encountered lions, a scorpion man, and his wife. He surmounted every challenge and fought valiantly, which enabled him to continue traveling. He eventually failed to become immortal since he slept non-stop for seven days. To obtain immortality, Utnapishtim instructed him not to sleep, but Gilgamesh was unable to manage his tiredness. When Utnapishtim saw how upset he was, he gave him the advice to explore the ocean's bottom in search of a plant that, when consumed, would restore his youth. The plant was found by Gilgamesh, who took it, but he later lost it to a poisonous serpent. He was devastated when he returned to Uruk. Gilgamesh was killed and his body was interred in a tomb erected on the Euphrates River. Now that we've brought up the archaeological find from the beginning of this video, you must be thinking about it. Archaeologists actually found this tomb. The archaeologists' excavation was halted by the Iraq War, which also hindered their ability to continue. They began concentrating more on magnetometer surveys because they were unable to perform actual excavations. These discoveries would demonstrate the veracity of Gilgamesh's tale and the reality of this mythical occurrence.